Hey guys, hope you're well. I just wanted to share this video about what sort of results you should expect when working with Pivot, particularly around the dollars and the cents uh, from financial advice. Look, as excited as I get when we're helping people build financial plans about all of the touchy-feely benefits that they get from advice, more confidence, peace of mind, clarity for the future, all of those sorts of things. I know that at the end of the day, if you're considering making this decision, you need to make sure that you're getting a return on your investment. So this video basically unpacks a handful of client stories where they were at, what they did, and what the financial upside was as a result of going through the planning process. There's a little bit here, so I'm going to talk quickly. Um, uh, and look, yeah, I get when people come to us, they know that action's needed, but they don't really understand advice, how it can help them, and where the value is actually going to come from. And that's what I wanted to unpack. This video is all about what we do, how we work, and what to expect. This... Um, is also a call out that we do measure everything and that creates accountability on us as your financial planners that if we build this awesome financial plan and show that you're going to get these awesome results and they don't come together if there's an issue with the plan we expect you to hold us accountable similarly if if we got these great results and we're not getting them um and it's because of action at your end then we keep you accountable and that's part of uh, what we're here for at the end of the day it's your plan so um you know it's up to you where you want to take it but all we want to do is set up a plan that's going to give you results that you're happy with and then make sure that you work towards that plan. So the first story that I got to share, uh, Jane, names change to protect the innocent or the guilty. Um, she came to us, income about $80,000 a year, self-employed. She had cash savings of $100,000, but her monthly cash savings were actually negative. She was frustrated by the fact that she didn't really have any knowledge around investing, wanted to invest, but was afraid of making a mistake, had, was stuck in this overspending trap and really was working hard, but had no clarity on the future outcomes, no confidence that she was going to end up in a good place. What, we, what she wanted was to build some income streams from investing, some tax efficiencies, and ultimately working towards home ownership. So what we ended up doing was purchasing a property, building a share portfolio and doing some business planning around her tax in particular to increase the after-tax income from her business. Big benefits for her was confidence to pull the trigger on investing and property, two of things that she'd been really uh, sitting on the fence on for a long time and watching the market sort of move away from her, missing uh, the opportunity and creating an opportunity cost and creating an automated savings system that made it easier for her to finally actually get on the front foot with her savings. The upside and what we do um, to measure this is we look at the trajectory that someone's on when they come to see us and then the trajectory that they end up on after putting the things in place that we put in the financial plan. So after year one, the monthly upside was $6,000. So $72,000-ish a year, or maybe it's a little bit more than that. Um, and then after year 20, though, the total upside, $8,000 per month. And that's in today dollars terms. So uh, the today dollars is about 100 grand a year better off as a result of putting in the things that we've got in place in the first 12 months. Jack and Jill uh, were a couple that we work with on a solid combined income, 412,000 plus RSUs. The cash, uh, they had cash for 125,000 and 250K in shares, saving $9,500 a month. So saving at a really solid clip. Their frustrations were tax bills. They were paying a ton of tax. Expats not familiar with the Australian system. And what they wanted was a clear plan to buying their family dream home, but do it in a way where they weren't stretched, where they were confident that they were going to be able to pay down their mortgage at a time frame that they were happy with. The strategy that we put in place for them was purchasing a home, uh, then implementing a debt recycling strategy where we paid down the non-tax deductible home loan debt and created investment debt to build a share portfolio. Tax planning around... Um, uh, general investment tax planning and RSU planning. And we actually pulled back on their savings by $3,000 a month to implement some of these things. So gave them permission to spend more because they could see that they were on track that they were happy with. The benefits for them were the confidence to buy the home, permission to spend and tax reduction. And the upside for them was actually negative in year one because they um, they spent about two million bucks on their home, which meant that they incurred a whole bunch of stamp duty expenses and purchase costs to get in. Uh, but after the year 20 and extrapolating that out, even with reducing their savings rate on a month to month basis, they were better off by $9,000 per month. Joy and Julie 
Uh, this couple that we're working with, combined income, 308,000 plus RSUs, a little bit of cash, a bunch of personal debt. Um, these guys were saving, uh, but saving at a, a relatively slow rate relative to their income. They were quite frustrated by that, uh, as well as the tax bills, missing opportunities and feeling like they were sort of chasing their tail. For these lovely ladies as well, they also wanted to start a family and they weren't given that they weren't making the progress that they wanted before starting a family, they were really worried that they weren't going to be able to um, do that and do it the way that they wanted to. What we ended up doing, clear plan, covering all the bases, family planning and tax reduction. And basically they're, um, this couple, two lovely ladies, they each intended to have a baby. They wanted to take a year off for each of the children that they had and then work on a part-time capacity. So that was a really core part of their plan that they knew wasn't the best financial decision, but obviously a great personal one that they wanted to make happen. Uh, tax planning, employee share purchase plan, and we bumped up their savings by two grand a month. The big benefits for them was doing something with their investments that got them in a, on a pathway they were happy with, but importantly, doing it in a way where they had a... Uh, the, the family lifestyle that they wanted for that. So for these guys, because the focus wasn't as much on the, on the money, on the dollars and cents, it was more on the lifestyle. We knew that there wasn't going to be a ton of upside in the short term, particularly after taking two years out of the workforce fully and then working in a part-time capacity for another five or six years between them. The upside in year one was negative by $200 a month, but after year 20 was, was just slightly positive, which they were really happy about because they got to start a family, um, build their investments and, um, uh, and work in the way that they wanted to as well. Jim and Jenny, another couple uh, working with combined income, 340,000 plus commission, cash 30 grand, uh, employer shares, saving one and a half thousand dollars per month. Their big frustration was lack of savings progress. They just couldn't find a way to make it easy to save. Money's really easy to spend. Sydney's not a, a cheap city to live in, but they didn't have any investments behind them. So what we did for them was build investments. That was a core focus of the plan. And then ultimately buying an investment property. The strategy was about building that emergency fund, then investing in shares, then buying an investment property and increasing their savings by three grand a month to make that happen. Benefits were saving system and getting on that path. The upside, year one, $3,000 a month um, through building investments mainly, but after implementing some of the tactics over time, upside $7,200 per month in today's dollars terms by year 20. James and Jean, uh, combined income, 350,000 plus commission, cash, 100 grand, two and a half million dollar home with a $400,000 mortgage, saving a bit over $8,000 a month. They, again, big tax bills, no investment income, lazy equity in their property, but they were scared of pulling the trigger. And what we ended up doing was purchasing two investment properties using the equity in their home, refinance their home loan to get them a cheaper mortgage interest rate, which ended up saving them over $10,000 and clearing their home mortgage uh, over time. The big benefits for them was building their investment income, putting their equity to work and getting that stronger asset growth through property. I actually put this plan in place a while back and they've been kicking a bunch of butt and actually exceeding these numbers here. But the upside for them, 4800 4, a month in year one, $11,000 a month after year 20. Gonna go, uh, combined income 180,000, shares 110K, super a million dollars. 1.3 mil home with a 450k mortgage saving one one and a half uh, one and a half thousand dollars a month. Big uncertainty for them about they're a little bit older, um, wanted a game plan for retirement. What we ended up doing was that they had this insurance um, uh, payout that they had in super. We did a roll up with that, which created a ton of tax efficiencies, drove some super contributions, cranked an investment portfolio and increased their savings by three grand a month, which actually allowed them to retire a couple of years sooner. They big benefits for them, massive tax saving from the insurance roll up and an achievable retirement plan. For them, the upside wasn't huge, but this the year 20 upside included them fully retiring from the workforce and turning off their income. Last story that I got here is June. Uh, June came to us income 260K, cash 50,000, shares 110 grand, investment property 650,000 with a $500,000 debt and saving about three and a half grand a month. She uh, came to us with her existing advisor not delivering on their service promise that she wanted to be better with their money, engage an advisor that built an awesome financial plan, but she just wasn't getting the awesome results that she was looking for. Um, what we ended up doing was have a big, or what she wanted rather was to focus on maximizing all of the opportunity and the ability to travel for six months and take six months off work every five years. What we did through the strategy was reviewing the existing strategy, focus on building investment income 
uh, and a path to financial security. The big focus around investments, though, because she already had a lot of things in place, was giving her the confidence to invest more. The upside for this one in year one, it wasn't significant because we didn't really change a lot of stuff. But after year 20, after implementing some of the other tactics that we put in place, two and a half thousand dollars a month. So guys, hopefully that gives you a bit of a sense of, uh, of what we're about uh, uh, at Pivot. Look forward to chatting in more detail, get those questions ready, and we'll catch up with you soon.